Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on analyzing the differences between percentages using SPSS. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have in the data view in SPSS, you can see I have one variable here, and it's named gender, and it contains two levels, male and female. And if I click the A1 button up top here, you can see that male has been coded to zero and female coded to one. You can also see that in the variable view under values. Zero equals male, one equals female. So let's assume that these data come from a research study where participants were asked to choose the gender of the counselor delivering the treatment to them. And we'll assume that based on how the research design is structured, that there was no option to say something like no preference. They had to either select a male counselor or a female counselor to proceed forward in the study. And let's say that this variable is of particular interest to us because all of the participants in the study are male. So the null hypothesis here would be that there would be no difference between the number of males and females selected by the male participants. So first, let's take a look at the frequencies and go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Frequencies. And you can see here we have the Frequencies dialog, and this is what it looks like by default. And I'm just going to take Gender, and move it over to the Variable List box, and then click OK. So we can see that we have 150 observations here. If we look down at the Gender table, we can see that 82 of the male participants selected a male counselor and 68 of the male participants selected a female counselor. So 54.7% selected a male counselor and 45.3% selected a female counselor. So again applying the null hypothesis to this table we would expect to see 75 for the frequency associated with the males and 75 for the frequency associated with the females, or a 50-50 split. Instead, we have a 54.7, 45.3% split, and we want to know if that's a statistically significant finding. So to determine that, I'm going to go to Analyze, and I'm going to go to Analyze directly in the output window, although of course you can go back to the data editor and use that as well. And I'm going to go to non-parametric tests, legacy dialogues, and then chi-square. And you see chi-square test. This is what the dialog looks like by default. I'm just going to move gender over to the test variable list. Under options, I'm going to add the descriptive statistics. Click continue, and then click OK. So you can see we have a table labeled descriptive statistics and we have that sample size of 150. Down here under chi-square test frequencies we have the table labeled gender and again we have the 82 male and 68 female for the observed n and then we also have the expected n which we knew about from before but here it's detailed and you can see it's 75 male and 75 female residual is also provided. You can see the residual here is 7. That's because 82 is 7 more than 75 and the residual for a female is negative 7 because 68 is 7 less than 75. And then moving down to test statistics we can see the actual value of the chi-square statistic 1.307 and then we have the p-value and it's 0.253. And this tells us that there's a 25.3% chance that we could have made this observation based on random error alone if the null hypothesis were true. So using an alpha of 0.05 or 5%, which is common in the social sciences, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis in this case. So we would assume that the participants did not have a strong preference either way as to whether they had a male counselor or a female counselor delivering the treatment because we failed to reject the null hypothesis. 
So these are the results if we assume that there's an equal chance that they're going to select a male as opposed to a female. Again, 75 expected n for male and 75 expected n for female. But what if the expected n is an equal? What if the expectation would not be that there's a 50-50 chance that they would select a male or a female? Well, we can adjust for that under non-parametric tests, legacy dialogues, and chi-square, the same place that we went before to run the chi-square test. So you can see here under expected values, the first time I ran this test, I had the default set here, which is all categories equal. So in this case, it would be 150 divided by 2, and that's where we get the 75 for each level of the variable. So if I were to put those values in, if I were to put 75 and add, and then put 75 in again and add that, run the statistic, I'm going to get the same result as before. But if I go back in to the chi-squared test, and let's say there's some evidence to believe that for this particular treatment, that the males would select male counselors at a two to one ratio over female counselors. Say there was research that indicated that for the particular treatment that was being delivered. That becomes our expected value set. So I would remove the 75 from the list box, both of the 75 values. And for the values for male, which would be the first, I would put in 100 and then for the values for selecting the female counselors, that's going to be 50. That creates a 2 to 1 selection bias in favor of the male counselors. So these values now become the expected values. So if I click OK, you can see I have 82 still, of course, uh, for the observed N for male, but now the expected N is 100, and 68 for female, but the expected N is 50. Again, that 2 to 1 ratio. Under these circumstances, our results were statistically significant, 0 0.002. So there's only a 0.2% chance that we would observe these findings through random error alone if the null hypothesis were true. So in this case, we would reject the null hypothesis. In this case, we did not see the expected 2 to 1 ratio, but rather we observed values more consistent with there being a roughly equal probability of the participant selecting a male counselor as compared to a female counselor. I hope you found this video on analyzing differences of percentages in SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.